Welcome to part two of section two. Here we go. If no subscript is written, the number one is understood. For example, the formula sodium chloride tells us that there is a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium ions to chloride ions. Formulas for compounds of polyatomic ions are written in a similar way. For example, calcium carbonate has the following formula, CaCO3. Oh, here's a good quiz question. What is the, ratio, the ionic ratio of calcium carbonate? Well, you would say there is one calcium, and you say there's one carbonate. Oh, yeah. Nice. <coughs> Naming ionic compounds. Let's, let's learn how to name these bad boys, or bad girls, or whatever. Magnesium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, sodium oxide. Where do these names come from? Ionic compound. That's right. For an ionic compound, the name of a positive ion comes first, followed by the name of a negative ion. The name of the positive ion is usually the name of a metal, but few positive polyatomic ions exist, such as the ammonium ion, NH4+. If the negative ion is a single element, as you're already seeing in sodium chloride, the end of its name changes to ide. Yes. For example, magnesium oxide is named magnesium MgO, is named magnesium oxide. If the negative ion is polyatomic, its name usually ends with 8 or ide, as in figure 8. Back to figure 8 again. The compounds, this compound would be a what? Ammon, what is that one? Check out figure 8. Ammonium nitrate. A named ammonium nitrate is a common fertilizer for gardens and crop plants. This is also the thing they use in truck bombs. But I strongly dis discourage you to make truck bombs. In any case, this is how you name it. Moving right along. But before we move right along, let's have a little let's do a little practice, okay? Let's go back to figure eight. Follow me back to figure eight. Where is figure eight? Here she is. All right. Here's a good quiz question. Let's see. What if I said, tell me the name and, and tell me the name and write the formula of sorry, if I said write the formula of calcium nitrate. So you'd say, oh, well I see that the calcium is Ca and it has a two plus charge. All right. So that must mean, oh, okay, let's look at nitrate. Nitrate has an NO3 negative. Okay, so NO3 negative. But it looks like I need two. I, wait, it's a negative one charge. So that means I need two negatives to balance the two positives. So I'm going to put brackets around the nitrate and say little two. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't see that. Calcium 1, nitrate 2. Let's do another one, just for all practice sake. What if I said, tell me the name of <coughs> lithium phosphate. And so you'd say, oh, that's easy, Mr. Worley. I can see that the lithium ion is Li+, plus and it has a charge of 1. So I'd write lithium right here, because it's the positive ion. And I see, Mr. Worley, that phosphate is... 3 negative, so it's a negative 3, and it's PO4, so I'd say PO4. That's a negative 3. I need my charges to balance. 1, negative 3, oh, okay, so that must mean I need 3 lithiums to go with every PO4 negative, PO4. All right. I encourage you to practice naming 3 more compounds from the list. If you can name them, You'll get the points on our quiz. Here we go. Moving right along. Okay. Uh, Page 162. Moving right along to 162. Properties. Properties of ionic compounds. Table salt, baking soda, and iron rust are different compounds with different properties. You wouldn't want a season to season your food with either iron rust or baking soda. However, these compounds are alike in some ways because they are all ionic compounds. In general, ionic compounds are hard, brittle crystals that have high melting points. When dissolved in water or melted, they conduct electricity. Okay, here's a couple of great things to write in your notes. 
high melting points, they conduct electricity. Okay, ionic crystals. In figure 11, figure 11 shows a chunk of halite or table salt, <laughs> NaCl. Pieces of halite have sharp edges, corners, flat surfaces, and a cubic shape. Equal numbers of NaCl and sodium and chloride ions in solid sodium chloride are attracted in an alternating pattern, as shown in the diagram. The ions form an orderly three-dimensional arrangement called a crystal. Oh, let's check this out. What is a crystal anyway? A crystal is an orderly three-dimensional huh, arrangement called arrangement. Oh, that's a vocab word. Anyway, here it is. See, here's sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride. That's orderly. There's a pattern. Notice the sharp, notice the straight edges. Notice the flat surface. That's a crystal. Whoa, look how that is the same shape as a real salt crystal. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. <laughs> it is, actually. Isn't that cool how God made it like that? So beautiful. Anyway, let's keep moving. All right. Rating right here. In an ionic compound, every ion is attracted to ions of opposite charge that surround it. It is attracted to ions above, below, and to all sides, the pattern formed by the ions remain the same no matter what the size of the crystal. If a single grain of salt, sorry, in a single grain of salt, the crystal pattern extends for millions of ions in every direction. Many crystals of ionic compounds are hard or brittle due to the strength of their ionic bonds and the attractions among ions. Okay, high melting points. What happens when you heat an ionic compound such as table salt? When you heat a substance, its energy increases. When ions have enough energy to overcome the attractive forces between them, they break away from each other. In other words, the crystal melts into a liquid. Whoa, that was two chapters ago. Because ionic bonds are strong, a lot of energy is needed to break them. As a result, ionic compounds have a high melting point. Mr. Worley, Mr. Hey, student, why... Do ionic bonds have a high melting point? Oh, oh, I know because I studied. It's because they have strong bonds. Strong ionic bonds are strong. Good student, I'm proud of you. Here's a quiz point. Anyway, as a result, ionic compounds have a high melting point. They're all solid at room temperature. Table salt must be heated to 801 Celsius. <laughs> That's super hot. Before the crystal melts. Moving on to page 163, our last page. Oh, yeah. Check it out. The last property of ions. A solution of a sodium chloride conducts its current across the gap between the two black rods of a conductivity tester. As a result, the bulb lights up. Here's our last <coughs> property that I want you to know of ionic, ion I I I I <gasps> ionic compounds. Electrical conductivity. Electric, electric, electric current is the flow of charged particles. When ionic crystals dissolve in water, the bonds between the ions are broken. As a result, the ions are free to move about. The solution conducts current. Likewise, after an ionic compound melts, the ions are able to move freely and the liquid conducts current. In contrast, ionic compounds in solid form do not conduct current well. Ions in the solid crystal are tightly bound to each other and cannot move from place to place. If charged particles cannot move, there is no current. Key concept, what is a crystal? Just one moment. Uh, what is a crystal? Oh, oh, good vocab word. What is electrical conductivity? The movement of charged particles. Okay, class, well, that wraps it up for our reading. Remember that you need to do numbers one, two, and three or writing in science, number two paragraphs. Let's review our objectives quickly. Identify the properties of ionic compounds, that was high melting point and electrical current. Uh, explain how the formula names of ionic compounds are written. Remember, magnesium chloride, MgCl2, sodium chloride, NaCl, remember those, practice that. Describe ions and explain how they form bonds. How do ionic ions form bonds? By trading electrons and then being attracted to each other. All right, guys. Ladies and gentlemen and student, I'm proud of you. Come to class with your notes and your assignment and be ready to rock that quiz. This is Mr. Worley saying...